Welcome back to another edition of Yes, We're Here. I'm Ian Joy, and I am delighted to be joined by NYCFC midfielder Keaton Parks. Keaton Parks, thank you so much for joining me. I've been wanting to do an interview with you for a long time. But before we get there, how are you handling the difficult situation right now around New York? I'm doing good. I'm just staying home, trying to get my workouts in here in the, here in the living room and uh, solo runs outside. Um, but yeah, everything's doing good. Everybody uh, that I know is doing good, and we're just we're just getting through it. Well, it's great to finally get this opportunity. As I mentioned, a lot of people are big fans of yours, and in particular, my broadcast partner at the Yes Network, Joe Tollis, and he is a huge fan of yours. And he was crying long before you got your opportunity in the first eleven to get a start. Um, what is your message, I guess, for NYCFC fans right now who are out there, who are going through some difficult times, isolation's not easy, being told to stay at home? Do you have a message for your supporters, especially the NYCFC fans out there? Yeah, I mean, just keep fighting through it. Um, this isn't uh, easy for anybody. Um, nobody could have predicted this would happen, you know, and uh, we're all just in this together. We're fighting through it, and uh, it's very important to stay home and and keep yourself isolated and uh, practice social distancing. And um, we're all going to get through it. Everybody wants to get back on the field. Everybody wants to get back to soccer. But um, our health and our safety is priority, and we got to look out for each other. I couldn't have said it any better. Awesome, Keaton. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get to it. You decided to go at a very young age over to Portugal to start your professional soccer career. What was behind that decision? Why did you choose to go to Portugal first and foremost? Was it a family link or was it just the opportunity to play in Europe? It was a connection through my coach from back in Dallas. So he used to play in Portugal and he had a lot of connections there. And he's the one that, that developed me from a young age. And um, he's the one that brought me to Portugal. So, um, yes, it was my dream as well to play in Europe. So when they linked together and he could bring me to Portugal and I could go to Europe, yeah, I mean, it all just worked out. And, it, and uh, that, was, that was the easy first step for me. Easy first step, and you said it worked out. It worked out probably better than you expected. You ended up going to Benfica, which for me is the biggest club in Portugal. And right. I apologize to sporting fans and Porto fans who are watching on because I do have some friends who are supporters of those clubs. But you went to Benfica. I mean, that is a big, big move for a youngster. You know, how did that feel for you to pull on that jersey and, and represent Benfica in Portugal? That must have been awesome. Yeah, it was an amazing feeling. Um, I mean, just uh, even with the B team, even just the first time I got to put on that jersey and to to really feel a part of a part of Benfica, a part of the club, it was it was an amazing feeling, a dream come true for me. Um, and then especially my first game with the A team in front of fifty thousand fans at the Estadio da Luz, it was crazy. It was it was really just a dream come true. A dream come true. Okay, you get your opportunity, obviously, to play in front of a, an incredible stadium. And as my Portuguese team, so I do have a soft spot for them. And <laughs> as you know, I, I got a good friend who you know, Nuno Gomes, uh, who's sure. a, a big man at Benfica. Um, so they are a little bit of a love of mine. But you decided that the opportunity to come back to Major League Soccer was maybe too big an opportunity to pass up. How did the move come before when you came to NYCFC on loan? How did that move come about? My agent um, was the link between uh, Benfica and New York City FC. Um, so he's the one that, that had the connections and, and had, the, had the link and set it up for me. And, um, I mean, that first loan move was just a big step for me. I got to get my first long-term minutes in the, in the first division of, of football. And I, I had a few minutes with, the, with Benfica as well, but um, the playing time just wasn't there. The team was very successful, and it was just hard to get in. So... Um, coming back to, to the MLS was just a, a, a big step for me and a, a great opportunity. And that's, yeah, so that link was just through my, through my agent. So you got your opportunity, you came back, but you had to be patient before breaking yourself into the first 11. How difficult was that for you? Because I knew at that point, personally, you wanted minutes. You wanted to play in the first team. Of course, yeah, that was, a, that was difficult. Um, I think if for any soccer player, anybody can tell you, like, we, we just want to play. You know, we want minutes, um, no matter where that is. Um, and then, of course, when you're not playing and, and you feel like you're putting in work every day and working hard, it, it gets difficult and it, it, uh, it wears down on you. Um, but, you know, it's just it's part of the job. Everybody knows, like, there are going to be 11 players starting and then three subs. And if you're not a part of that, that's just part of it. You know, you got to keep working and you got to stay fit and you got to just wait for your opportunity. 
Well, you took your opportunity because since you broke into the starting 11, it's been very difficult for them to leave you out of the starting 11. You've really impressed me. And I know my broadcast partner, Joe Tollison, has been jumping hoops now since you've got into the starting 11. He won't shut up. Um, but you've made the move permanent now to NYCFC. You know, what is it that's so special about the football club that, that you love so much, um, especially a message for the supporters as to understanding why you made that move to NYCFC? Yeah, I, I loved it here. You know, the, it was a great season. Uh, we had a lot of success. And, uh, I mean, it didn't end the way we wanted it to. But overall, we had a lot of success as a team. And, um, I mean, I just fell in love with, with all the guys, all, all the staff, all the – everybody who works with NYCFC it was always great to me and very welcoming. And I mean, it wasn't it wasn't hard to make that decision. Um, I mean, I really I really like the atmosphere. I really love fans and the just everything that came along with NYCFC. So it was a it was an easy easy decision for me. It's probably very similar to what you experienced in Benfica. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, I've been a part of NYCFC since the beginning with the Yes Network, and you're now at the club, but. NYCFC seems to be one of the more hated clubs in Major League Soccer, where I'm sure you experienced that with Benfica in Portugal as well. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, there were, I mean, there were a lot of fans. So people throughout Portugal were fans of Benfica, right? And they had their their fans of their teams, of their hometown teams. But then I think they were also fans of a big club, you know. Yeah. But especially when we're playing against Porto or Sporting, it's either a love or hate. You know, you're either a Benfica fan or you're a Sporting fan or you're a Porto fan. You know, and you you hate the other two. And when you go to those away games, you get you, you see it a lot. I mean, you know, everybody in the crowd is coming at you, yelling at you and stuff. So you definitely experience the hate. What about uh, targets for yourself when you arrived at the club this offseason? I know it's a little frustrating now going through the MLS suspension as we sit and wait for the ball to roll again. You know, what personal targets do you set for yourself? Do you set like a goal target? Do you set a target for appearances? Or do you just say, I want to be a part of this team and I want to try and win a championship? For me, it's all about the championship. Um, I mean, of course, I have these little goals for myself, which is goals and assists, but all of that is is towards helping the team. So if those don't come, that, re that really wouldn't bother me as much as if our team isn't successful. So I really, the way the last season ended was, was difficult. And so we're really just coming back and fighting for that championship this year. Well, we're waiting for it. We certainly hope for it now. <laughs> I know um, you've already represented the red, white, and blue. You've pulled on the jersey of your country. And um, playing for the United States is always very difficult getting an opportunity, but you got one. And do you still have aspirations and believe that it's possible playing for NYCFC that you can go ahead and get your opportunity with the national team again? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I'm, sur I'm surrounded by a great group of guys that will – will help me develop as a player and um, make me look good as well on the field. So, um, of course, I would love to play for the national team again. And um, even though that's not really a priority of mine, um, it's on the back of my mind. And I think putting in the work and, and performing here at NYCFC will, will translate into that. I don't know if you know, but I mentioned it actually in one of the first games this season. And I know we've only had a couple, but I did say that the future for you is very bright. And I do honestly believe personally that you have what it takes. And at this stage right now with what the national team is going through, you have what it takes to get back in there. So I wish you all the best with that. And, and again, it's really important that we get back to full fitness. We get back, the game's rolling again, and the team starts winning games. Let's shift it just a little bit, Keaton, over to what you're doing personally through this time, because it is very difficult for people who are stuck at home. They've been told mandatory that they have to be at home, make um, the right decisions for their loved ones and stay home. And what are some of the things you're doing to keep yourself occupied? Have you been a little creative around the house? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, I'm getting my workouts in. Uh, I do go on runs outside of the house, but then everything else is here in my living room. Um, but yeah, so I've actually, my girlfriend has been in town since the quarantine, and uh, we actually made some candles. We ordered a candle making kit, so that was something different that we had to work out. And we've been cooking nice. a lot, um, and then I've been trying to play the video games and uh, getting my homework done and stuff like that. So I do have a lot of stuff to, to keep me busy around here. Keaton Parks, thank you so much. God bless you. Stay safe. Look after your loved ones. And to all the supporters out there who are watching on from all different sports, they send you love. And um, just real quickly before you go, it's not just soccer fans who are watching this one. You've got baseball, you've got basketball, you've got all sports, you've got people who are looking for just some sort of getaway from what the situation is that they're going through right now. 
What's your final message to those, those fans who are watching on? Uh, stay healthy and stay home. Um, so just really just practice your isolation, but also uh, if you get on the New York City FC uh, website, there's a lot of stuff that they're uh, putting out there from, from the players and from the staff and, and things you can do at home and keep you busy. So really just stay healthy and stay home. That's, uh, that's the message for me. Well said, Keaton Parks, New York City Football Club midfielder. Thanks once again for joining us on Yes Network. We are here.